Well, today's Advent reading begins in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Mark begins his Gospel unlike Matthew and Luke, who tell the very details of the Christmas story. But Mark jumps ahead in the story of Jesus to this encounter in which he baptizes Jesus. Mark begins his Gospel in this way. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. My friends, today I want you to understand that each of us have a very special role to play in the kingdom of God. We typically, because he's in the gospel stories, idolized John, who would have refused such a a proclamation, but we level up our view of John the Baptist thinking that we may be less than he is. Each of us have a special role to play. Your part that you play in the kingdom of God is important. Even in the kingdom of God, in our preparations for Christmas and the Christmas story, uh, the lectionary brings us to this, this gospel passage. And it reminds us of the very simple nature of the gospel of Christ. John the Baptist and his work was preparation, path clearing. He is a messenger. He's not the center of attention. And he even says that he is not worthy of the attention in in the Gospels itself. He reminds us that his role is to point to Jesus. Here's the problem with us today. Many times we look at ourselves as the center of attention. Sometimes even walking into church, we hope people notice us. Or people will see us. Or people will know Uh, the good work that we've done during the week. That's not the work of John the Baptist by any stretch of the imagination. His life and our lives are to point to Jesus Christ. You want to know something? God can do his work without us. God could have accomplished his work for the kingdom without John. God can do whatever he wants, but he chose to use John. And here's the great news in this story, and perhaps the surprising news. God chooses you today to remind people that Jesus has come, and that he will reside in their hearts, and he can change their lives from sinfulness to one of purity. I can't imagine a greater story this Christmas than you picking up the responsibility to say, it's my work to continue in the spirit of John the Baptist preparing the way for the Lord. How do we prepare you know, the way for the Lord in today's era? I mean, Jesus has already come. He has arrived and crucified and was raised to life, sits at the right hand of God the Father. So what's our role? Well, it could be that conversation that you've never had yet with your neighbor. You may not even know their name. You may not know details or be aware of their family's needs because you just don't know them. So preparing the way of the Lord may just be having a conversation with them. You don't have to agree with their ideas to have a conversation. Nor should that be the reason why we do not speak into people's lives and and get to know our neighbors more than sometimes we do. Another way could be just by an invitation. It could just be sharing as a gift the people that you've grown to love at your church. That simple invitation could be life transforming for them. It was by a simple invitation one year that my cousin brought me into his church. He was so proud of it. And it was around that time that I gave my life to Christ. What if... My cousin Paul had not invited me to church. What then? It could be that the only thing standing between your neighbor or those you know falling in love with Jesus Christ might just be 
an invitation. It's as simple as that. Do you see how simple it is for us to prepare the way of the Lord? To help cultivate the soil of a heart and and begin to be a bridge so that people can find Jesus? Our work should always point to God, to Christ's work. We are not the center of attention, and God, even though he doesn't have to, chooses to use you and your gifts and your network of relationships to change people's lives. Think about how you can have these types of conversations this week. And let me pray for you that God would give you the courage and the confidence to do so. Father, the power of Christ, allow the gospel of Mark chapter 1 to speak to us. We are your messengers. We are to be clearing the path so that Jesus can become Lord in the lives of those who need you. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you give us the courage, the Holy Spirit to go with us, so that when we don't know what to say, you will speak on our behalf, so that people will know that we genuinely care about them. Help us to get to know our neighbors, know their names, know their their children's names, know their needs. And I pray in the Spirit of God that you would guide and direct us this week as we prepare for Christmas by being your messengers. In Christ's name, amen. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great week. God bless you.